Michael Jordan once famously said, Republicans buy sneakers too. His airness now claims the comment was made in jest, but it was symbolic of the separation between the sports world and the political arena. Nowadays, well, that's over. To say sports and politics never used to mix would be a lie, but there's no doubt things took off when Donald Trump was in office. Even with Trump gone, though, things seem to keep bubbling up. Just in the last few weeks, we saw Golden State Warriors coach Steve Kerr's emotional reaction to the school shooting in Uvalde. When are we going to do something? I'm tired. I'm, I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences to, to the devastated families that are out there. I'm so tired of the, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm tired of the moments of silence. Enough. The Tampa Bay Rays also found themselves in the middle of a pair of politically charged headlines. First, when they used their social media platforms to list gun facts instead of game commentary in response to the mass shootings in Buffalo and Uvalde. Governor Ron DeSantis then vetoed a proposed deal for a new spring training facility while taking some shots at the Rays' stance on gun control. And then this past weekend, five Rays players refused to wear rainbow logos on their uniforms in support of Pride Month, calling it a faith-based decision. And just as we began our first round of public hearings from the January 6th committee aimed to detail the horrific events of that day, we have Washington Commander's Defensive Coordinator Jack Del Rio's interesting take on the insurrection and the Black Lives Matter protests following George Floyd's death. Why are we not looking into those things. We're going to talk about it. Why are we not looking into those things? Because it's kind of hard for me to say I can realistically look at it. I see the images on TV. People's livelihoods are being destroyed. Businesses are being burned down. No problem. And then we have a dust up at the Capitol. Well, there's nothing burned down. And we're not going to talk about We're going to make that a major deal. I just think it kind of two standards. Oof. Del Rio eventually responded on social media with a statement saying his comments about the January 6th attack on the Capitol being a dust up was, quote, irresponsible and negligent. And I am sorry. So here to talk about this recent intersection of sports and politics is David Sampson. He's the former president of the Miami Marlins and the host of the Nothing Personal with David Sampson podcast. All right, David, straight out of the gate, we're going to start with the Jack Del Rio dust up, if we're going to call it that. I had to write this down because there's so much of it. The Washington commanders, congressional hearings, $10 million fines, sexual misconduct settlements, Federal Trade Commission investigations, Virginia and D.C. attorneys general investigating financial allegations of financial improprieties. And now two senators in Virginia are saying, hey, commanders, that new stadium, you're not getting it. This apology, David, is it really an apology? And does Del Rio actually spell a new beginning for the commanders trying to do an about face to save their own hides? Oh, let's start with the second one first. There was nothing about that apology that came from Jack Del Rio. That was written by PR people and lawyers for the Washington commanders who only decided to get involved after people in Virginia and lawmakers in Virginia said, we're probably not going to finance any part of your new stadium. And what's interesting is that a few days ago, after his first comments, Coach Ron Rivera said, I don't really need to comment because it's his choice, his individual opinion, and if I felt the need, I'd get involved, but there's no need. But then money got involved, and then all of a sudden the commanders got involved. And you just named a laundry list of issues they've had. <sighs> Daniel Snyder, the owner of that team, has been stepping in it for so long. He's now worried about being forced out of the NFL. Forget putting out all the little fires. They, he now has a torch right in his pants, Katie. Yeah, but David, it takes 24 yes votes to get him out of the NFL. You don't think this recent drama involving Jack Del Rio is going to be enough, including that laundry list that I just listed for you, to be able to get him out of the commanders? No, I don't. And here's why. Because if you do need 24 owners and those 24 owners are saying to themselves, if we get rid of Danny Boy, what happens if they come after me next? And there's nothing owners want more than to keep their teams and only sell them on their terms, maybe even for estate tax planning purposes. But no, it's very hard. The example in the NBA is back with the Donald Sterling or in baseball with Marge Schott. When there is something that is so egregious that there is no choice but to get rid of someone and generally it has to do with race. 
this Jack Del Rio comment just has more to do with politics and stupidity and just an uninformed opinion. So I do not believe it will lead to the end of Danny Snyder. We did have the pleasure of having you on a previous episode with Billy Corbin about publicly financed sports stadiums. How do you feel about Ron DeSantis vetoing that $35 million line in the budget in Florida to be able to say, you know what, Ray's too much politics from you, sir, that new spring training facility? I don't like your stance on gun control. I'm going to veto it. I spent years in Tallahassee trying to get state financing for the new Marlins ballpark that was eventually opened in 2012. And you're talking about the intersection of sports and politics. It's been intersecting since the beginning of time, which is why baseball has an entire committee dedicated to lobbying both sides of the aisle, because you're always going to need something from politicians when you're running a big corporation. But at the end of the day, what you want out of your governor and out of your state lawmakers and really your federal representatives, you want a fair shot. My problem with what Ron DeSantis did, even if he doesn't want to support any public financing for stadiums, that's fine. That's his right as governor. But to say that he's not doing it because he's unhappy with Tampa and the political views that they have, either as an ownership group or as an organization, that's very dangerous. Because what you're then saying is, I'm happy to support you only if you believe what I believe and only if you say what I say the way I say it. And that does not sound like a democracy to me. David, for a long time, we did see sports figures stay out of politics. Do you see this wave of activism in sports being the new norm? Well, it all started a while ago, right, with the shut up and dribble. Do you remember that when of LeBron course. James and other basketball players said, listen, I'm going to use my platform. And I love the fact that athletes are using their platforms. It makes a lot of sense to me because their platforms are so unreasonably large, given what roles they play in society. And listen, I'm a sports guy. I've been a sports guy for decades, but I understand it's just sports. It's not life and death. It's entertainment. But to the extent that athletes can actually use their platforms to educate people, to help them understand decisions that are being made in Washington or locally, to help them understand different positions, I'm all in. But when you're using your platform to spew hatred and to spew incorrect information, that's when you get the apology tour. That's when you get the walkbacks. That's when you get lawyers and PR people involved. And that's happening more and more. David Sansom, maybe Jack Del Rio should have said it's nothing personal. David Sansom, thank you for being here. Billy Corbin and I are working on that bobblehead for our set. We will keep you posted and have you back when we have it. Okay.